and I'm going to do eight 360s with one hand and switch sides. So today at the playground again, it's Labor Day and probably the last day or last weekday at least that I'll get to use the playground before 3.30. So um, the only reason I mention that is the sun keeps uh, going down earlier and earlier and one of the reasons that I do prefer working out outside is to get the sunlight but if the sun goes down then i can't record my videos and anyway uh you guys get the point um today's workout is going to be a weighted pull-up themed workout so with every exercise i do i'm going to superset five weighted pull-ups uh with the 35 pound kettlebell so 35 pound weighted pull-ups um yeah and instead of doing like elaborate circuits or um five uh, sets of each superset that i usually do i'm going to pick a uh, fairly uh like just one movement uh and i'm going to do it for three sets and then superset whatever that movement is with uh, five pull-ups so um let's just get to the pull-ups This is going to be my third set. Um, so yeah, just have the 35 pound. And on each set, I'm going to like switch sides because it's tilted this way. So each time I switch sides, I'll probably even out any tilting. So five pull-ups. And super setting that with uh, a tactical kettlebell clean to snatch, a tactical clean, snatch. I'm going to repeat this four times on each side. So yeah, that was the first set of movements. Uh, the pull-ups are going to stay constant like I mentioned before. And yeah, let's see what happens next. So starting off with pull-ups again for the next set. And we'll superset it with the steel mace complex. So this is my sixth set of weighted pull-ups. Um, and there's something I wanted to talk about this in a second. I've mentioned it in a previous video, but I realized that people don't watch all of them. So uh, I repeat stuff. <coughs> so with five reps, it's a rep count that doesn't take me to failure and what that allows me to do is like maintain that rep count of five pull-ups throughout the entire duration of the workout because no one set is capable of fully exhausting my back but as a result i'm able to accumulate much more total volume by the end of the workout 
than if I were to go to failure uh, on each set. So like let's say I did three reps of 10 with the pull-ups or maybe more depending on what failure it was. But at that point I would be completely exhausted and then it would be hard for me to rack up more volume after that. But now uh, this is my sixth set of weighted pull-ups and I've been doing five so it's 30 and I, it feels like I can do a whole lot more. So yeah, that's kind of the benefit of not hitting failure. Um, there are times when you should hit failure, uh, but you know, uh, right today I'm going for volume. So supersetting that with five 360s uh, into shoulder presses for five. There is an offset load here, which will force the core to stay activated and have your stabilizers and muscles involved in maintaining balance to stay activated. Maintaining a pretty moderate pace during the workout, not really rushing through things. Today the goal is more accumulating pull-up volume than anything else. But yeah, this was the second set of movements. So for the next set of uh, movements, going to do a swing squat to figure eight cannonball shoulder press. So a swing squat, figure eight, cannonball, five presses. Repeat on the other side. I'm going to do two rounds of this on each side. And the cannonball grip forces the stabilizers to work a little harder and you have to press the weight a lot more intentionally. I've done one extra rep on that side, but it is what it is. And then back to the weighted pull ups. So, this is so, like I mentioned before, I'm doing three sets of each superset uh, and with each superset the pull-ups stay constant so this is my ninth set of pull-ups So yeah, this is uh, what I'm doing now, or what I was doing, on to the next thing. So for the next set of movements, doing a combination kettlebell and steel mace exercise. So holding my kettlebell in one hand and a steel mace in the other. and. I'm going to do eight 360s with one hand and switch sides. And 
the addition of holding the kettlebell adds a little bit of a variation in the biomechanics required to execute the movement and so it's just a interesting additional little challenge that gets the body working a little differently than a regular single-handed 360 and then moving into pull-ups this is set 12 and after this I would be at 60 pull-ups That was what was going on now. For the next set of movements, doing a kettlebell complex to start. So, going from, uh, ah, let's start with the flip. So, going from a flip into a clean. If you don't want to do the flip, you can just do an alternate swing. I just like flipping the kettlebell. So, uh, into a clean, into curtsy lunge thruster, then clean, curtsy lunge thruster, I'm going to do that three times, and switch sides with a flip, clean, curtsy lunge thruster. I'm going to repeat that whole sequence again on each side. Ah, I missed the clean on that one. I'm just going to do two cleans. Ah, let's just do it again. And then back to the pull-ups this is set 15 so this will make it uh, oh no is it yeah set 15 how much is 15 times 5 we set yeah so it'll be seven, the 75 pull-ups at the end of this That was this one. Now on to the next movement. For the next movement, doing uh, a steel mace 360 with my 25 pound mace into a deep Cossack squat. So looks like this. 360. <laughs> I'm going to hold it in like this parallel grip almost. I don't know what else it's called. And then go into a deep Cossack squat, stretching out the adductors and a lot of pressure on the uh, opposite quad. I'm going to do that four times on each side.
Oof. Making sure I go as deep as possible on those squats to really stretch out the adductors and get my hips loosened up. Then, as usual, pull-ups. Uh, this is my 18th set, so it will, it will be 19, or not 19, ni 90 pull-ups after this. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna do one more movement. We'll probably do three sets of that. Should end up with 21 sets of pull-ups, but let's see what that movement is. So for the final pull-up superset, starting off with a kettlebell complex. I decided to do something a little more that involved a little bit more legs just to make it hard so that you know make the last set pretty hard so starting off with a flip into a clean I'm going to do a lunge on each leg then do a snatch and do an overhead deep knee bend squat I'm going to repeat this sequence three times on each leg or three times on each side. I've already done 20 sets of my pull-ups so this will be the 21st set and I'm done with it. And now for the pull-ups. Kids are cheering, so I'm gonna do more. <laughs> so yeah, that was my final set of pull-ups. Ended off with 107 because the last set I did seven. Um, is going to move into some kettlebell juggling now. So moving into some kettlebell juggling, uh, but yeah, uh, I'll just I'll talk after my first sequence. Uh, 
Ah, whatever. Mistimed the catch on that. But yeah, pretty good workout, I would say. About 107 weighted pull ups. Accumulated a lot of volume. Uh, did a variety of different movements. Um, yeah. And if you're someone who doesn't do weighted pull ups and you're struggling to get to or improve your rep range or a number of reps with just regular pull ups, in my opinion, this is a good strategy to, like, let's say you're kind of plateaued at getting uh, eight pull ups per set and you wanted to improve that and get your, just get your body better at pull ups. Instead of trying to take the reps to eight each time, superset four or three pull ups with whatever exercise you're doing every day or every other day so like let's say you're doing legs and whatever you're doing was like leg extensions or something do four pull up superset with that or three or whatever that number is but keep that number constant throughout the entirety of whatever workout you're doing and you'll accumulate a lot of pull up volume which in my opinion uh, builds the pull up strength and also gets your body used to that motion of pulling up which should in turn result in a higher uh, rep count or getting better at pull-ups. Ah, spun that too hard. <sighs> Was going good though. <sighs> An hour and 43 minutes into the workout. 700 calories burnt. Um, you know like the calorie burn usually corresponds to how high you're able to uh, keep your heart rate during the entirety of the workout. I was moving at a relatively low pace today, but I lifted a lot of volume. And in my opinion, when you do something like that, you get like a more, like a, like a more sustained calorie burn for the rest of the day. Like for example, if you do like 10 sets of 10 squats, it might take you like 40 minutes to do in the gym uh, let's say at 225 pounds or something like that and you know that's that kind of volume might not immediately translate to calories burnt during those 40 minutes but I think what happens is later on it ends up uh, burning ab like about the same kind of calories as as if you would have done like a workout that was like high heart rate or something like that. I hope that makes sense. Like, for example, I guess what I'm trying to say is the kind of calorie burn you get from like doing cardio or something like that seems to be more restricted to the duration that you did it in and the calories that you burn throughout the day seems to be higher uh, depending on how much volume you've lifted and the he heaviness of the volume that you've lifted. I hope I phrased, like I hope I said what I wanted to say right. I don't know, sometimes I feel like when I'm trying to say something it doesn't come out quite right but then I listen to it later and it sounds okay enough. Um, yeah. And I, say, and I hate misrepresenting myself. But it is what it is.
That was pretty good. Didn't do a whole lot of side to side or forward backward movement. But as far as just the spinning of things, that was good. I always get sketched out when I'm uh, swinging the mace or juggling the kettlebell and there are people around because all it takes is a slight miss throw or a slight miss swing and if someone's just a little too close it could hit them and so I like to give myself quite a bit of space when I'm doing it Ah, didn't have it. Ah, people getting too close. I find myself doing similar patterns like so whenever I get to a side to side move I always end up doing the same things and I'm trying to break out of those patterns that I've somehow built for myself. Edge the ground on both those last ones, <laughs> but it is what it is. <sighs> One more sequence, and then it'll probably be it for today's workout. <sighs> Uh, I bought a hydro bag. Tidal Wave is the most popular version of it. I got like a cheaper version by a brand called Yes For All, called Aqua Bag or something. And it's like this weight bag that you fill water in. And when you're using it, the water moves side to side, which creates an instability component. And, I and it should arrive tomorrow. So hopefully, in the videos to come I'm able to like try that out and you guys can follow along with my progression on that all right last sequence
Ah, whatever. Like I said yesterday, I need to learn when to stop. And I'm stopping on that one. That's all for today's video. See y'all tomorrow.